Each and every one of us started life as one single fertilized egg. And in this animation, you can see how incredibly rapid this one single fertilized egg develops into a complete human being with all the organs and tissues it'll ever have. It learns to attach to parents, it learns to crawl, walk, eat, drink, and it grows incredibly rapidly. If you'd continue growing at this rate, you'd be more than 1 billion kilograms even before entering primary school. So the early years are incredibly important in shaping how we become who we are. And as a biologist, I'm very much aware of the fact that every living creature is susceptible to the environment in which it grows and development develops and especially during the early critical periods of growth and development the environment in which a living creature grows has a big impact on later life so on the left hand side you see an example of plants that are genetically identical but the seeds of those plants were planted in different soil bases and it results in very different phenotypes very different plants based on the soil base that was provided to uh, genetically identical individuals. And the same holds for animals, and I'm sharing an example of grasshoppers that again are genetically identical, but they grew up in different environments with a lot or little food, or with a lot of stress from predators around, or very little stress. And as you can see, not only do they look different, but actually they behave differently. They have a different metabolism and uh, different lifespans. And there's really no reason to assume that human beings are any different from the other living creatures. Humans too are very susceptible to the environment in which they grow and develop. And the soil base that's provided to uh, develop their potential has long-term consequences for their growth development, behavior, and their chances in life, both on uh, the labor market, as well as um, uh, on health in later life. So let's look at human beings. It really depends a lot where you're born and in which environment you can actually grow and develop. So if you're born as a girl in Japan, you can, based on statistics, expect to live 88 years on average. But if you're born, in uh, the Central African Republic, you can expect to live 54 years. And this difference has nothing to do with any genetic differences. This difference in life expectancy has a lot to do with the environment in which you grow and develop. So there's almost a twofold difference in life expectancy based on where you were born. And one could say, well, there's a big difference uh, on each uh, side of the globe. But even if we look within this tiny country of the Netherlands, of which you see maps uh, here on the slide, you can see that there are big differences in your risk of being born small as a baby with low birth weight on the left hand side, with the red areas being a high risk area of being born small and the yellow areas being lower risk of being born small. And these differences in your chances of being born small or bigger at birth have consequences later in life as well. So in the middle atlas map, you actually see um, based on exactly the same test score that children take at the end of primary school, what type of advice they get for secondary school. So this is standardized for exactly the same test score. Do you get higher advice? a blue uh, score or a lower advice than would be expected based on the same performance in the red areas. And as you can see, there's a big difference um, um, based on where you actually were born and where you grew up in terms of chances of getting a higher or a lower advice for your school career. And it doesn't end there because here on the right hand side, you can actually see that where you were born and where you grew up actually has an influence on your income. And again, this is also standardized for the type of job. So it's the same job where you would get a higher income if you were born in a certain place compared to a different place. So where you're born 
and the environment in which you grow and develop matters a lot for your um, uh, size at birth, for your chances in school, and also for your chances on the labour market. If we zoom in even more, and this is the city of Rotterdam, you can see that there's a more than twofold difference in your chances of surviving birth. So this is really uh, um, a big differences uh, that are uh, closely situated together geographically that actually determine um, um, your chances of life that don't end at birth, but actually continue to shape your health and well-being throughout the life course. In fact, a study in New Zealand has shown that um, if we look at societal costs across different domains, so societal costs in terms of medical costs, in terms of uh, insurance claims, in terms of medication, in terms of uh, unemployment benefits, in terms of uh, justice and crime costs, the researchers found that all the costs in these different domains actually cluster and that 80% of these costs are incurred by 20% of the population. And if we then look at what does this 20% of the population that incurs the majority of the societal costs, both in terms of social, medical, and uh, police and justice costs, it's the fact that they all made a false start in life. So before the age of five, these individuals could already be identified as the ones being at risk of needing unemployment benefits, needing more hospital stays, needing more medication, needing more medical care, and being uh, uh, at increased risk of incurring uh, costs for uh, police and justice. So through no fault of their own, these individuals made a full start in life, for instance, because they grew up in poverty with a single parent family who had uh, mental health issues, and that actually reduced um, uh, their early growth and development and hampered their chances of leading a happy, healthy and productive life later on in life. And these findings were actually replicated in, uh, uh, in Denmark. So at the other end of the globe, this distribution of costs actually was very similar. And we know in the Netherlands that 80% of the medical costs are incurred by 17% of um, uh, the population. So it seems to be rather similar here as well. 